Good morning guys and welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. So today is Monday, there's nothing particularly special planned aside from me needing to pay my speeding ticket that I got no less than a month ago today. So I've got about three days before that gets hiked up to double the price, so I better head to the post office and get that done. Before I move any further in the video, if you enjoy my content, please just take a second to hit the like button below. It's going to help out the algorithm an awful lot and hence help me out an awful lot which should be at the end of the day the only goal that you have in life so for this morning i'm about to hit chest inside in the crossfit gym it is little after 10 past six and it was a little bit depressing getting into the car this morning and realizing that the mornings are getting darker but we're not gonna let that negativity creep in we're gonna get in and we're gonna get a fantastic fantastic chest session and potentially some crossfit some cardio done afterwards let me talk you through this morning's workout. So I got to the gym at roughly quarter past six. I was uncaffeinated. I slept for about six and a half hours, which for me, I can function off it, but it's not enough for me. And bearing in mind that I changed the gym that I usually train out of. I don't usually train in the CrossFit gym. I don't usually use their equipment, their benches, their bars, their plates. So all in all, the conditions weren't ideal for me performing to the best of my ability. And I certainly felt it in working set number one. In working set number one of the flat barbell bench press, I did 130 kilos for, I can't remember the amount of repetitions, but you're probably going to see it here. It was fine, but it was definitely sluggish and a lot heavier than 130 should be for me. So nonetheless, I moved on to set number two, slapped on 140 kilos. I think I got like three repetitions out of set two, three rep repetitions out of set three. Again, nowhere near my peak performance of 140 kilos. The most I've ever done for 140 kilos was like 12 reps, well over a year ago anyway, but I was like 10 kilos heavier. So there's also that to factor into account. But nonetheless, despite the fact that I wasn't moving Moving the weight as well as I could. I wasn't moving it for as anywhere near the amount of repetitions I could do, let's say in the bodybuilding gym or in any other gym. I still, my default setting is to still go back to just working to total capacity, working to failure, whatever failure is or whatever point failure is on that particular day in that particular gym for that particular session. So I don't really mind. I consider each workout that I do, that I push myself to the best of my ability, a productive workout. Even though tangibly, would I have done much growing off of this? It's hard to tell. I did compensate by doing like five exercises for chest, which is a lot more volume than I would typically do in a session. So I compensated for the lack of strength that way. Regardless, with every exercise that I did, I just pushed myself as much as I could. And this is relevant for those of you who like maybe work out in hotel gyms or go on holidays or just have to change gyms every now and then. Don't worry too much if your performance falls below where it typically is. That's absolutely fine. Just focus in that case as, as doing as much as you possibly can. Up the weight, bash out the repetitions until you can do no more. And that for you is going to be a productive session. It's going to be a productive use of your time. For the second exercise, I moved on to dumbbell incline bench press. Now the heaviest kilos in the CrossFit gym, at least upstairs, I'm not sure about downstairs, but was 30 kilos. So instead of like doing probably 100 repetitions with 30 kilos, as I had imagined I'd be able to, not 100, but you get my point. I really, really focused on slowing down the eccentric portion of this lift. Now the eccentric portion, essentially where you're lowering from that top position to your chest, is actually really growth promoting. So if you can really take advantage of that, you can slow down the eccentric portion, still push yourself to failure, yada, yada, progressively overload over time. It can potentially promote growth more so than just flying through that eccentric motion. So in order to make the exercise harder, that's exactly what I did. I think I was probably even lowering the weight for in some repetitions, five or, or six seconds all the way down to my chest. So that made the exercise 10 times more difficult and it allowed me get to that failure point a lot more efficiently than simply just bashing out the reps. So I, I think I was able to do like between 10 and 12 really, really slow and controlled 30 kilo dumbbell incline bench press. And again, my best proxy in circumstances that are less than ideal is did I get to failure? Did I get to the point where another repetition was no longer possible? I even threw in some partial repetitions at the end of a couple of those sets just to make sure those completely and utterly frying my chest. After that, we moved on to incline dumbbell flies. Now this is a lot easier to get to failure because you know, you're, you're really not, no one who's doing a dumbbell fly properly is doing any more than 30 kilos at the max upper end of the spectrum, either that or they're completely and utterly horsing gear. So I think these are like 22 and a half kilo dumbbells. I was looking for the 25s, but I couldn't find them. 
Um, but in this case, as I said, a lot easier to get to failure just doing normal paced repetitions. Dumbbell incline flies were absolutely fine. One thing that I do try and do with dumbbell incline flies especially is to not bring my shoulder too far back at the end. So I have noticed getting a little bit of shoulder discomfort slash pain if I overly stretch my pec at the bottom of that movement. So I tried to bring my, it's hard to do facing the camera, but I tried to bring my shoulder to maybe just past parallel or my upper arm to just past perpendicular 90 degrees. You get the gist. So it's, it's just slightly past 90 degrees. And once I reach that position, I'm coming back to the top. So I'm not overly stretching at the bottom. I am getting a bit of a stretch, but it's just not pulling that shoulder out of position. It's just going back to about here and then coming up again. It's okay to have a slight bend in the elbows towards the bottom of that repetition. So as you're stretching out the chest, it's okay to have a slight bend in the elbow, but you want to focus on trying to straighten out those elbows at the top. Fourth exercise was bodyweight dips. So as you can see here, just pump it out the right. Like for most people, bodyweight dips are going to be challenging enough that they won't need to add weight, even more so if it's the fourth exercise in a session. So here, I think I was only able to do like six to eight full repetitions. I did a couple of partials again, and partials are a really, really useful tool for you to just dial up the intensity of a particular set, of a particular exercise, of a particular workout because it allows you to keep going a little bit past like what full failure would be. So the last repetition that you could fully complete, it just allow because at, at that bottom position, you still have a little bit of strength. Your muscles are still capable of contracting to some degree. They're not capable of contracting to the point that you could complete a full repetition, but there's still some working capacity within that muscle. So just doing some partial repetitions at the end of a set can be useful in terms of maximizing the stimulus that you're getting from that set. So that's exactly what I did with the body weight tricep dips, three sets on every exercise that I've done here so far. And just because I felt like I was working suboptimally, just not working to the capacity that I could do in the sense of the weight that I could lift, the reps that I could do with that weight, I decided to throw in, I think it was two sets of slightly elevated uh, like bar handle push-ups. Again, getting a really deep stretch at the bottom of that, contracting all the way and doing some partial repetitions once more, once I had reached full technical failure. That was my push workout this morning. After the push workout was completed, I fell in for the conditioning segment of the CrossFit class that was going on downstairs. That was challenging enough, simply due to the intensity that Patter Collins I introduced to in the last vlog. The intensity that that man pushed me through because he is an absolute freak of nature when it comes to fitness, when it comes to just, you know, pushing someone to their limits, like this man is just another level. So it was like 10 front squats straight into 10 pull-ups, followed by five basically shoulder press with a bar, immediately into five uh, burpees over a bar. There was one kilometers to complete on a bike, and then you finished off with a 400 meter run. In terms of like the volume of that conditioning slash cardio session, wasn't a whole pile, but simply due to the intensity that Patter works at, because it was like an on-off partner-based workout. Whenever I was resting, he was working, and because he's so fucking fit, he was getting it done in half the time of the typical person. So I basically had no time to recuperate or recover, and by the end of it, I nearly got sick, but we didn't, and that is the main thing. So to give you a bit of an update as to what meal number one is going to be. So it's only half eight in the morning. For legal reasons, I can't disclose why I'm having my first meal so early, but nonetheless, my first meal is uh, three turkey burgers. One of them is half eaten with one half eaten sesame bagel and one muffin, packet of muffins that you can get from like little as well. Two slices of cheese on top. Very, very easy way to add an extra 10 grams of high quality protein to your breakfast. So I have a lot of work to do today, hence the reason why I'm having meal number one so early, because when I get into a good flow, especially with some external help, I tend to lose my appetite, not really eat for the rest of the day. And the last thing that we want is to wake up Tuesday morning, skinny as fuck, no muscle, but at least I got a load of work done, hey. Right, so that's it, down the hatch. I've got a call with my business mentor at nine o'clock. After that, I'm gonna have to pop to the post office to do some errands and that errand being to pay my speeding ticket, which gets doubled in two days that I haven't paid from like a month ago. So I gotta get that out of the way and then I come back and it's gonna be a straight run for the rest of the day of doing work for the relaunch of the Fitzes app in about two weeks time. Bon appetit. So it's been a long time coming and I've put this off for as long as I could possibly put it off. 
but today I am going, well, I can't show you because confidential information on it, but I am going and paying my speeding ticket that I got. It's a funny story about the speeding ticket because it's the first speeding ticket, it's the first offence that I've ever had in my life. Uh, but I was, I was doing fucking 100 in a 60, right? But it's not a 60 that, you know, is justifiably 60. It's one of these 60s that could easily be a 120, all right? So I'm just going to say that. But it was a Sunday evening. You, you know when you sit into the car and your Bluetooth automatically connects and an absolute whopper of a tune comes on the radio and you're just cruising, you're vibing, the, the radio's on full blast, you're screaming to yourself and you look like a crazy person if anyone happened to see you sing. Anyway, we've all been there, we've all done that. I had Thunderstruck on the radio and it had just gotten to the good part of Thunderstruck so maybe my foot put a little bit too much pressure on the accelerator than when I got down to the roundabout. A lovely Bangarda pulled me over and asked me, do I know how fast I was going? And the answer to that question was... <sighs> so she showed me. Anyway, I got that over, over four weeks ago. I haven't paid it. it. Like, I'm not one of these people who gets these things out of the way straight away. Because to me, if I can go four weeks without paying it, it's cheaper in my head with some very strange maths, it's cheaper to me than if I was to pay it straight away. Dunno. Anyway, I have to go to the post office and get that done. Not only is it bad enough that I have to come into town to pay a speeding ticket that I don't want to pay, it was 160 euros, but it, I must have spent the last half an hour trying to find number one a parking space around town, then I admitted defeat and came to the bane of my existence, which are multi-story car parks. And the reason a multi-story car park is the bane of my existence, is because the fucking last time that I was in one, I ended up scratching the bollocks out of my car. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there. You have a nice little scratch there, nice little scratch down here. Despite that minor blip of Monday misery, we're gonna have a great day. So it's currently 25 to two. Funnily enough, when I'm doing like a fat loss phase, this would be the time that I'd have meal number one, not meal number two. So I'm interested to see how hungry I get in the evening time if it's like pretty equivalent in terms of the same amount of meals that I consume, whether I start my meals earlier at like half eight, which I did this morning, or start my meals later at like half one, or maybe even 12 o'clock like I do usually. You might have noticed that I'm chewing on something. Guilty! I was sticking my hand in the cereal box. These are fucking like, they're Lidl's equivalent of Crave cereal and they're 10 times better. There's like more chocolate in them. I've actually only had one like bowl of them, as in with the milk as well, I've eaten half the fucking box by simply just going into the cupboard every now and then, sticking my hand into it, like I'm gonna do now, and eating them. In any case, meal number one is gonna be two of these bagels, four of these eggs, and probably two or three bacon medallions. My leg doms from two days ago are intense, <laughs> are intense. And that's like two leg sessions in a row where I've had doms worse than I've had in a long, long time. That's correlated with the bro split. Kind of, I suppose, understanding that it's going to be a while before I hit my legs again so I can just bring in extra intensity to each session that I do. Like throwing in the odd drop set or just, you know, pretty much leaving everything in the tanks. That's another one of the benefits of the bro split. As far as my kitchen utensil saga goes, it gets worse. Uh, there's no more plates, so I had to put the, the eggs and the bacon medallions in a bowl while, you know, using my makeshift knife for the day, which is in fact uh, not a knife, it's a spoon. So meal number two, I did say that I was going to have two of these bagels, but because I kept dipping in and out of the basically little crave cereal box, just sticking my hand in, shoving it in my mouth while I was waiting for this to cook. I decided to sacrifice a bagel to make up for the calories that I, pro or to at least try make up for the calories that I consumed by just literally picking for no other reason than there was a box of little Crave cereal in the press. Uh, the eggs did not come out too good. <laughs> um, I don't know, this pan, I don't know, is it from using a metal spatula and like, I don't know what you'd call it, chipping away at the non-stick material but the eggs have just been sticking to the pan a little bit too much too frequently and that's now what they're looking like either that or just putting it on full heat is not how you're meant to cook eggs what am i a fucking chef 
bacon medallion, another bacon medallion. Can a monster, my second of the hour, and that is us for meal number two. Let me get the chain out. I think my chain could be one of my favorite purchases. Definitely top three favorite purchases this year. I am at a stage with my lifting, with my nutrition, in the short term, I'm not talking about the long term. It's like the purgatory between am I clotting or am I bulking? And you end up just like eating more than you would in a cut, but being conscious of not eating so much that it could be quantified as a bulk. And you end up in some weird ground of like maintenance where you definitely feel a little bit fluffier, the pumps are better, you, you look a little bit waterier than you were in a cut, but you're not quite fat enough to, again, commit to it being a bulk. So I'm in that weird purgatory right now and I am leaning towards solely for content. And I mean solely for content because I really do think it's good content. Most people in my comment section in TikTok seem to think that bulking is harder. So what I was thinking is to pursue a lean slash clean bulk for the next few months and just show you essentially how it's done. In line with that, what I started to tease out is that a lot of people have this perception of a bulk that they can't get over the mental block of it that will allow them to just fully commit to it and you know pursue a bulk for the most of the next year and there's a number of like things that come with this the main one is not being comfortable with body fat gain especially if you're someone maybe coming from a history of being a little bit overweight as i was when i was like 14 slash 15 but also if you've just worked pretty hard to get pretty lean and you've got the validation of being lean maybe you went to a festival maybe you took off your t-shirt at the beach in front of some 50 year old women maybe you got a lot of compliments of being lean and the thought of starting to put on additional body fat and not being as lean is starting to put you off the idea of doing a bulk altogether. Now this is a foolish mindset to have but nonetheless I do think that it's valid. You are going to have to accept one way or another that you're not going to be lean six months into a bulk than you were at the end of a cut. That's just, it's not possible, it's a fairy tale, it'd be great if it was but it's not going to be the case so get that out of your head straight away. But how you need to frame the addition of body fat is that it's going to facilitate the process of you building the best possible physique. It's going to facilitate the process of you building the most amount of muscle, the most amount of strength. So you can look at the body fat gain that will happen as a good thing as opposed to it just solely being a bad thing. The fat that you gain creates the energy dense environment for you to show up to the gym pretty linearly, pretty much every single week to slap extra weight on the bar. And what you need to do is trade the gratification that you would get from staying lean and having abs for the gratification of the PBs that you should be setting pretty much each and every week. So you need to switch your focus from the aesthetics of how you look to the satisfaction of the strength that you will gain. You need to be solely focused on setting PRs. You need to pick an exercise or pick two or three exercises that you really want to progress in so that every week you have something to look forward to. You have a new challenge to set that is completely independent to how you look visually, to how you look with your shirt off. And I'll put it to you this way. One of the biggest reasons why I was able to bulk for pretty much the majority of the 10 years that I was in the gym, let's say seven years of, of the 10 years I've been in the gym, pretty much all of that was bulking. And the reason I was so successful with it was because I became so obsessed with increasing my bench press. And it was pretty much just my bench press that I was obsessed with progressing each and every week. That that fueled me. That, that gave me the reassurance that me eating extra calories, that me getting a little bit fatter was a good thing. Because I was pretty much showing up to the gym doing one and a half kilos, two and a half kilos more than I was doing in the previous week. I started to think six months down the line, if I'm progressing my bench press, whether by a rep, whether by a kilo, every week or every two weeks, how is that going to manifest in six months time? What kind of weight could I be lifting in six months time? So I got so hung up and so obsessed with that, that I really didn't care about the body fat that I was gaining. I knew that if I could blow up my bench press, 
if I could blow up the amount of weight that I was squatting, if I could blow up the amount of weight that I was rowing, that I was going to, one way or another, have much more muscle than I had right now. I became so invested in the pursuit of strength and I trusted the process that if I was to get monumentally stronger across pretty much every lift, that in six months, in nine months, in 12 months time, I was gonna be a hell of a lot more jacked than I am right now. So that's what you need to focus on. Forget about the aesthetics, because we are entering into autumn to winter. Most of you in Ireland and the UK, when the fuck are you gonna be taking your shirt off? Realistically, when are you going to be taking your shirt off? We have just come out of like the worst summer of all time. It was raining most of the time. I think I can remember coherently two days in the end of May in which it would have been slightly feasible for you to take your shirt off. So if in summer you're not even, no one's seeing you shirtless, what are the chances that people are seeing you shirtless in the middle of fucking November? So catch your grip, Get out of your own head, do the right thing, do what needs to be done, because the alternative is that you become so petrified of gaining extra body fat, God forbid, over the months of November and December, that you do nothing, you stay spinning your wheels, you stay in the exact same position, have the exact same condition that you have right now, and then when you cut next May or next June, you're going to be woefully disappointed with the physique that lies underneath. So it is a binary decision between next summer Cutting down to something that is actually pretty amazing, pretty impressive, pretty remarkable, as opposed to just cutting down next May and June and still looking like a scarecrow. So the choice is yours. You can allow this mental roadblock to debilitate your physical progression, or you can get over yourself, you can start seeing the forest for the trees, and you can do the thing that you know full well is the right thing to do. If you enjoyed that, if you related to that, number one, drop the video a like. Don't really care about subscribes because it's at like 110,000 and I'm still trying to get my long form content up. So if you like this video, if you comment down below, comment a question, comment a, a compliment, give me some praise. I need that praise. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely emotionally volatile that if I don't get praise from randomers that I've never met in person online, then I will start to lose control of my emotions. Have a great day. Have a pleasant evening. Have a great sleep if it's like 10 p.m. and you're watching this in bed. And nonetheless, the next time that I post, be the first one, please, to show up, to watch it, to like, and to comment down below. Take care.